All right, welcome to another uh, video from FarmD and me. Today we're going to be talking about renal dosing uh, medications, or for the most part, antibiotics. Um, this is part of the Intro to Hospital uh, Pharmacy series. All right, so um, you, what you'll want to do first is I created this chart uh, maybe about a year ago, so I'm not even 100% sure these are up to date, but they're they're close. Uh, so this is a, a current renal dosing of antibiotics chart. Uh, if you look on the left side, you'll have the uh, the drugs, antibiotics, and then if you kind of see, there's a couple lines where there are uh, the creatinine clearance ranges. Uh, so the the top one there is unison, at the, and then if you see above that, the creatinine clearance. So if uh, the patient has a creatinine clearance above 30, you could do Q6 dosing. If it's between 29 and 15, it would be Q12 dosing. And if it's less than 14, it would be Q24 dosing. And then on the far right uh, category is dialysis. So for hemodialysis, you know, it would be uh, 24 hour uh, after dialysis, Q24 hours after dialysis. And you can kind of go down the list. Uh, they're, they're broken up a little bit because some of the drugs have different ranges. It's not that they're, um, they're different in any other way. So like that whole second category, all those drugs, mostly the cephalosporins, uh, they kind of use the same creatinine clearance ranges, so they're in a little category. Leviquin has its own little spot there, Merum, and then Zosin. Uh, so it's not the easiest chart in the world to make. Uh, you could obviously make your own. Uh, I got these from a drug reference. Uh, you could get them from package inserts or however you want to find the information. Uh, put together uh, a chart like this and then just keep it with you when you're working if you're a staff pharmacist and, and you can look them up easy. Uh, also, I should point out that uh, you should also use your hospital protocol. Um, a lot, of, I'm assuming probably most if not all hospitals have some sort of renal dosing protocol where they'll have all these drugs uh, that uh, should be dosed the way that it's been approved by the p and committees and things of that nature. So obviously you would use that uh, and hopefully they would have an easy to use chart also. Alright so let's get into some examples uh, and then I, that way I can kind of explain more as we go of how to actually renal dose uh, patients. So this patient is a 77 year old female prescribed Zosin 3.7 375Q8 for pneumonia. Her height is 148 centimeters, weight is 65 kilograms, and serum creatinine of 1.8. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is we're going to obtain a creatinine clearance. Uh, it's an estimated, calculated, however you want to say it, creatinine clearance uh, based on serum creatinine using the cockcroft galt equation. Um, if, you're, if you're new to this, um, you can basically just use an online calculator. If I'm moving fast, I'll just do the, I'll just use actual body weight, unless they're real, real obese, and I'll just, I can calculate it out on my calculator faster than I can look it up and, and plug in the inputs. Um, you know, just 140 minus age, multiply that by their weight in kilograms, take that number, divide it by 72, take that number, divide it by the serum creatinine. If they're female, multiply that number by 0.85. Uh, so I can do that a lot faster than I can going to uh, a website like Global RPH and using their calculator. The good part about that is that you can use their calculator and they will, uh, you know, if they're obese, it'll calculate it out using their adjusted body weight. It'll tell you which one you should use, whether it's actual or adjusted. And, and so it is easier that way. Uh, but it, it is uh, a little bit longer. So that's the first thing you need to do is get a, a estimated or calculated creatinine clearance. Uh, then you'll check your drug reference, whether it's Micromedics or Lexicomp or, or there's many other ones or just your hospital protocol. And then you'll, uh, you'll adjust the dose. So for this patient, I went ahead and just use the uh, uh, Global RPH's uh, calculator. If you don't know how to use Global RPH, maybe I can make a video on that also. Uh, there's all... The website is great. It's it's almost a uh, necessity at this point for hospital uh, staff pharmacists because you can look up information so f so much faster than pulling it out of a book and and trying to find it on other websites too. So 
Um, and they, they have a bunch of calculators, and one of them is going to be the uh, serum creatinine. I mean, uh, creatinine clearance. So uh, you plug in the, uh, the inputs, and what it came out with was their, uh, if you look at the bottom of the second row, it's got the little bullet point next to it. Um, their uh, creatinine clearance is going to be 22.4, and that's gonna, it's using the adjusted body weight. So if their creatinine clearance is 22.4, so we'll check, this is for Zosin, we're doing Zosin 3.75Q8. So we'll go back to this slide and we'll go down to the Zosin. And on the left column at the very bottom corner, it says order 3.375 grams. So then we'll go over and we'll find the creatinine clearance category they fit in, which is gonna be the 20 to 40. And then so their dose will be 2.25 grams Q6 hours. So we'll so that's what their new dose will be. The patient's new dose will be 2.25 grams, Q6 hours. Uh, you'll either adjust it per protocol, um, you know, that your hospital got approved, or you could call the physician and, and let them know that the patient's uh, renal function isn't that good and that the dose should be 2.25 grams, Q6, and hopefully they will agree to that. All right. So the next example um, is uh, very similar. We've got a patient that's 80-year-old male uh, with pneumonia, prescribed Levaquin, Levaquin 500Q24. His height is 168, weight is 85, serum creatinine a 2.3. Um, so it's the same steps again. So we're going to get a creatinine clearance. We're going to check our drug reference, and then we'll adjust the dose. Uh, so again, using the global RPHs calculator, we end up with a, a creatinine clearance of 26.2. Um, we can go back and check our drug reference. And for the Levaquin, if they were dosed at 500 uh, milligrams, again, they'll be in that kind of second category. I had that, it's actually bolded on this one, 500 milligrams loading dose. And then 24 hours later, we'll do 250 milligrams, Q24 hours. So we'll go back here. So the patient's new dose will end up being 500 milligram loading dose, followed by 250 milligrams, Q24 hours. All right. Uh, then the final example, we have a patient is 45 years old, uh, male, prescribed Lovenox, 80 milligrams, Q12 hours for the treatment of DB, DBT. He's 165 centimeters tall, weighs 75 kilograms, CM creatinine of 4.7 milligrams per deciliter. Uh, the patient receives dialysis on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So we'll go through the same steps again, creatinine clearance, check the drug reference, and adjust dose. Uh, this one, I kind of threw a curveball at you a little bit. This one, uh, patients on dialysis should not receive Lovenox uh, due to risk of bleeding because it's, uh, it's a renally dosed, uh, or it's uh, excreted renally. So patients on dialysis should receive heparin. Um, I kind of just threw that in there uh, just to kind of um, give an example of what, how you can't just be narrow focused on, okay, I got this order, I'm going to crank it out, I'm going to crunch the numbers, go to, you know, go to Global RPH and check the drug references and, and I'm just going to dose it and not realize like, hey, this, you know, it's actually contraindicated, I don't know if it's exactly contraindicated, but it's not FDA approved to use um, Lovenox on dialysis patients. So sometimes you can kind of get focused on something and not pay attention to the, to the other things. Um, other examples of that, let's see if we go back up to this one. Some of them need to be dosed after dialysis. Um, you know, you can see on cefepime there, if they're on dialysis, it'll be one gram Q24 after dialysis. So you might just get in the zone, you, re, you remember that cefepime's dosed 1 gram Q24 if the patient's on dialysis, but you might forget when to actually dose it. Um, see, so that's something also you need to think about. Um, the Zosin orders, um, you know, those ones, when they're on dialysis, they can have very different uh, dosing too, 2.25 grams Q12, 
Uh, there's also can be a difference between hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis, as you can see on like the fluconazole example there. Uh, on hemodialysis, it's Q24. After dialysis with peritoneal dialysis, you'll actually dose at Q48. Um, I recently got a good example of vancomycin dosing. I don't have vancomycin on this chart because it's it's very individualized. Obviously, you there's I mean, there can be charts that will tell you how to dose it, but for the most part, uh, you're going to have to do some calculations. I, I've already made a video on, on vancomycin dosing, but um, had a patient on vancomycin with peritoneal dialysis. Uh, and the way we handled it at our hospital was we put in a one-time dose of a gram, uh, so one gram, and then we drew a trough after 48 hours. Um, and then it came back at about 22 or, you know, we're shooting for closer to 15. So we went ahead and just, we were going to plan on giving another dose, uh, the following day, another 24 hours later. And that's kind of how we'll, we'll just kind of pulse dose it from there. So we'll give a dose, we'll check the trough again in 48 hours if we need to, and then we'll, we'll see where we're at. And if we need to dose it that day, we can, otherwise we can dose it. Uh, you know, whenever it, it would be needed. Um, all right, so let's get to the last slide here. So in conclusion, uh, renal dosing is actually pretty simple. Uh, my suggestion is don't memorize it. I think if you try to have have them memorized, I think you're, you're bound to make a handful of mistakes. Uh, the best thing to do is honestly just to keep a chart with you. It takes a second. Um, you know, you're going to have to calculate the creatinine clearance anyways. So, you know, I think having a chart with you is just the easiest way to go uh, whenever you're working. Obviously, if you were in school and you're being, you know, tested on uh, dosing, uh, renal dosing medications, then yeah, you, you know, obviously memorize it. But, but when you get out in the real world and you're working, it's best just to have a chart. That way you don't make any mistakes. You can dose it how the hospital wants it to be dosed. And um, it's just the easiest way to go. Uh, and then again... Um, you know, you periodically you should check your drug references uh, if your, um, you know, things change. Whenever I started working a handful of years ago, the renal dosing was actually different than it is now. Uh, the chart that we used here uh, is actually an updated chart. It was different a couple years before this. Um, for example, the Zosin. Uh, if you look there, it says creatinine clearance greater than 40. Uh, we were using creatinine clearance greater than 30 um, as the, kind of the first cat. I, I like to call them break points. So the first break point with Zosin was creatinine clearance over 30 uh, or under 30, obviously. So you dose one way over 30, a different way under 30. Um, I think the fluconazole one, it changed where we were dosing it. Um, it, it was, you know, the, it was the difference between the 50% doses, things like that. That's kind of that was new too uh, for the for that last two categories there. Basically, everything under bold is new. That's that's how I created this chart, so that way we could I could kind of remember everything that was bold was was different this time around. Um, so as you can tell, you know a good amount of things changed in in just a couple of years. Uh, so um, you know, make sure you double check your drug references periodically just to make sure that everything is has er, you know nothing's changed. All right, so I think that's going to wrap up this video. Feel free to leave a comment, like, and subscribe, all that kind of good stuff.